Hey guys, Kristen Leak here. Today I have a special guest, Cindy Ramirez. She is a UX designer based out of Dallas, Texas. And she's here today to talk about UX. That's right. Hello everyone. Thank you, Kristen, for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I'm really excited to hear more about what you're doing. Wow, it's very interesting. I love UX. So, um, how, did, how did you get into it after grad school? Well, um, Kristen and I, we, we went to San Jose State University together, and you probably remember um, that we had this uh, interactive product management class with Kim Kominik. Mm -hmm. and he just went over a lot of the things that I do on a daily basis as a UX designer that I didn't know were part of the UX designer career path when I first started. Um, Kristen also knows that I moved uh, from Mexico to go to graduate school, and then I started working here, and I, de I decided to move my career towards user experience design after taking the course uh, with Kim Kominik because he uh, he made us he made us really understand how to build an app and how to make sure it satisfied a user need right so right. that is UX in, in its essence and I I think that it just blew my mind to be, be able to do that and to be able to do that as for a living <laughs> I didn't know I could do that for a living. Um, that was the first time I started learning about what's wireframing and how do you do sketches, how do you put those sketches together and then you, you know, make them into a wireframe and then you make your prototype and we actually develop a couple of smaller products and that was also the first time I think Kristen might have been in touch with web development. Yeah. And um, it really was the root of, of our, I guess, our passions now. <laughs> yeah, After, I definitely learned yeah. a lot with all his projects. What yeah. was your favorite one that we did? Um, I really liked the first one we did with the photo book uh, using this, this, the series of Adobe products um, to do an interactive photo book. Oh, the but I, Revolution? Revolution Revisited, yes, cool, I remember yeah. the name. I really liked that one just because there were so many things that we did for that project that are actually part of it, you know, just talking to him and understanding what were his goals as he was a primary a client in this case, but, you know, also he was going to be the user. And just seeing the story of his photographs come to life in an interactive uh, medium, you know, an interactive platform. I don't like that one, I guess, because it was the first one as well. And it was the first time that I was asked to do wireframes. So <laughs> that yeah. was really fun. Um, but I think overall, I like them all. Actually, for my final project in my career, since I wanted to move toward UX, I did a lot of the research for my final project concentrating on a specific set of, of users for redesigning a, a web application or for designing a web application for a woman who was interested in pushing a um, cooking app for children. So I don't know if I can say in brand names, but <laughs> her app was all about kind of connecting moms that were interested in cooking and also teaching their kids about international cultures and you know health recipes healthy recipes so that so they could learn how to eat right but also learn about different countries through cooking so yeah. to, for that i also did you know what are my what are going to be the users who's going to be reading this and i did the wireframes and then i did the sort of development because i did use a lot of wordpress for that and so it didn't code from scratch, <laughs> but it was really interesting. And it all came out of Kim Kamenik's class. Yeah, that was a really cool project. Was that your, is that your graduate? Yeah, that was my project? graduate project. Okay. Yeah. So I think we were already not taking classes together by our last semester. Yeah, but even though we graduated at the same time, our last semester was very disconnected from everybody we started our graduate program with. So everybody was just doing their own things, right? Oh, yeah. Their project. <laughs> but yeah, it all went back to the, that first class with Kim. And of course, during the rest of my semesters at San Jose State University, I just tried to take courses that could help me moving towards UX design. Uh, because I didn't want to switch to a specific, you know, like usually the career path is kind of going into human computer interaction. Mm -hmm. But I was already like halfway through the master's program. So I just started recognizing, I guess, or researching what could make me a UX designer, what were the requirements for the work industry. And I realized I already had a lot of that. I did my undergrad in um, artificial communication as well, so graphic design was already there. That's so then, cool, you already did graphic design. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was extremely helpful because 
there are some really passionate researchers that want to do in, that want to go into the science, so they have to take the science courses or boot camps. And I also uh, took as many boot camps as I could, you know, to get in touch with the career and just understanding what the traditional user designer is doing or what is the future of UX design as well. And well, eventually I um, started an internship at HP and I handled the website content as well and tried to tailor it for kind of like make it more approachable for the internal people at HP. So I proposed new designs and new things that was, you know, kind of like trying to move my career forward. And then my, my first official job um, was with a startup when I was doing user experience and kind of also like customer support because we didn't have budget for research. I uh -huh. sort of just took it to myself to talk to the users using our, our own app and we were we were a communication app or I was working for a communication app and they sent us messages, messages right? So usually they would send complaints. <laughs> so I would like go and take a look at those, get them, you know, answers. Okay. And I started realizing, you know, oh, we could fix this, we could fix that. And with the other, the other designer, the company and the product manager, we just, you know, propose things and try to make things better. And that really wasn't moving exactly as I wanted in terms of what I wanted to go with my career. So I started looking for another job and I found this position. I'm working right now at Saber. It's a tech company that's focusing on the travel industry and it's based outside, out, out of South Lake. I've been here for almost a year and a half. No, I've been here for a year and a half, officially, not oh, almost. Oh, that flew by. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been, all, yeah, this year would be two years around July, August that wow. I moved to Dallas. So time just going so fast. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, this past year at Sabre has been like incredible. It's been a roller coaster, but in a positive way. Um, the, the company really, focus a lot of effort in improving UX um, across all the levels of the company. So I just started getting to know designers about my age and people that like to, you know, work in the industry and just for some, so many different backgrounds and also really experienced designers. And honestly, like I said, in my first company, we didn't have like a big research team. We didn't have a research team actually. And at HP, it was such a big organization that it was very disconnected from my, um, kind of lately workflow mm -hmm. that I didn't have a chance to experience research so closely until I started working at Saver. And that's been magnificent. Uh, research is an, it's a primary, um, it's, a, it's a primary thing that you have to have before you start doing UX. You can never assume that you know everything that your users want. You may have an idea and you may start a concept from there, but if you don't have user research data, there's no way to really design a product that's going to be beneficial for your users. Mm -hmm. So Saber has an awesome team um, of researchers and designers. <laughs> what's, uh, your, have a lab. what's your workflow um, like? My daily workflow. Uh, well, I work for a, a business product. It's it's a B two B. It's not really consumer centric, okay. so it's more enterprise. Um, it's at an enterprise level and everything. It's kind of very geared or very. Uh, it's very directed uh, from, I guess very directed by the business requirements that a company has. In this case, they're, they're the airlines, there are multiple airlines that use our product. Okay. So and they all have actually different business processes. So we just try to serve them as best as we can, but also we're trying to improve the usability part of our product so their daily lives could be easier. They, mm -hmm. This application that I work for has a lot of data, like the users need a lot of data to do their works. And usually what they do is that they have to export PDF reports or Excel reports, and then they have to keep them open and use that data to compare um, or to decide what to move, fix, or modify around in the application. Oh. So a lot of what we want to do is just um, automate some of those processes, you know, Nowadays, you could have, you know, with cloud and with example, an example would be Google Docs, right? You could have two or three users working there at the same time, and you can see real things happening, the real changes, right? Of course, that's Google's technology, and we don't um, can we cannot we don't cannot offer that to our customers right now. But that may be the future. You know, we could 
we're moving towards that. We're doing the change that we need to do, and we are improving our UX. And right now, it's just me on the team, but we do collaborate um, across my business unit at Saber. There's a, a lot of other designers working on their specific products, but we all try to keep collaboration as a must in our daily work. In our daily work, because we need it. Um, and also, Saber is it's um, implementing its own library of the standards, which is it just simplifies certain things and it gives all products in a company a uh, standard and a uh, look and feel that they can follow. It's similar to what Google is doing with material design or what Apple has with all its Apple products or you know even Microsoft. So all companies are doing it. Airbnb has its own. I've seen Uber, they also have its own. So mm -hmm. cool. it's just the trend. Yeah, so, that's neat. Do you yeah. work with or collaborate with um, developers at all, or is it mostly designers? No, I do collaborate with developers. Okay. Um, what is let me that think like? about how to phrase this. <laughs> I mean, with designers, we just do the we do the design work together, and we're collaborating almost every day. But we never stop talking with our development team. It's not like we're in a room and we're bunkered up, and then we, you know, tell them this is what you have to do. No. We are in constant communication with them also to understand what would be technical challenges. And they're really open to working together with us um, to make sure that the implementation of the designs is accurate. I think that that's essential. Um, thankfully, I guess I've never been in a team where developers are non receptive to the comments or instructions or you know guidelines that UX has. I think that's just key at every company. I've talked to other people you know in the industry, and it seems that. Sometimes a relationship can be difficult, but it's always for the greater good of the product. So everybody's always cooperative, I guess. Awesome. Do you have to know any code to communicate with them, or is it pretty um, easy? It, yeah. I, for example, don't have to 100% know it for my product, mm -hmm. but I still like to know. Um, so I learned we are, our, our product is using it's not really using web-based technologies, so I had to learn a little bit about other technologies to do front-end. Mm -hmm. But there's a development that's happening right now in just web platforms. So there's interest from our designers to really be familiar with that. I, Like I said, when I did my final project in my master's degree, in our master's degree, I had to learn to code a little bit, but honestly, I didn't use that as much after. So it kind of faded away. <laughs> I'm interested in learning, you know, more about it now because it just helps you prototype a little faster. Sometimes developers have just a lot of other things to do to support the product that, that if you want to test something, it's maybe easier if you do it. Just the you know, just the carcass and you know, the front and part of it and makes you know, see how it looks. Why and then oh, go ahead. Um, oh no, sorry. I mean I, I think that was all. Just see how it looks and then they can fix it and make sure it's functional. Yeah. Which um which languages are helpful for you to know? I think HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are essential. Okay. After that, uh, like for for JavaScript, um, having different well, there's different possibilities for for JavaScript, right? You know, for yes, for the framework, you could use React or Angular, JS or Angular two. Yeah. So I know that. Technically, they're supposed to make it easier, but honestly, for me, uh, the JavaScript part hasn't come really easy for me. It's been like a learning curve, so I'm trying to understand it and implement it. But with the styling or using CSS for stylizing my components, and right now you can also add behaviors to your CSS components, I mean animations. You can add fade-ins and fade-outs and other types of animations that you used to require JavaScript to do, and now you can do them with CSS. So it's so nice. <laughs> it is really nice, and it just makes it easier to test something. You know, maybe you just want to see how that you know fading looks, and you can mm -hmm. you can see it by yourself, and then decide if that's the best behavior for your product because animations are part of a language right now as well for UX. The way you present things to the user in an animation, it's uh, could be overwhelming, or it could be you know fun and engaging. What's the most interesting project you've worked on so far? Um, I think it's my my career at Saber. It's been just a whole bunch of interesting projects. 
I'm really happy to be working uh, at a company that's just looking towards the future and it's extremely diverse and that has a lot of, um, how to say this, I guess, um, has a lot of work I mean, in the sense that they're, they're just, they're, it's a travel industry company so you could get involved in, in products that could change the way people experience travel and that's just really satisfying particularly for my project uh, right now we're just focusing on the airline industry and it's been uh, an incredible year because of all the discovery that I've experienced in learning about the airline industry for itself like there were things that even before as, her, as I used to you know jump on a plane and then get off the plane and then go to where I had to go things that I didn't even thought needed to occur for that plane to be ready for you to serve you know your snacks or then to make sure it connected you with uh, with another flight that you were taking there's just so much going on every piece has to be um i guess fitting perfectly <laughs> and that's just been wonderful uh, i think this is my favorite project so far cool oh and i almost forgot i was curious what is then what is the interview process like um for my my I guess I don't have a lot of you know experience in my three jobs that I've had so far. But, but just so far, I mean, three is a bunch. Yeah, um, in my three jobs that I had so far, I've interviewed with. Um, I guess I can talk about other jobs that I tried to get that I didn't get. But overall, the whole interview process is for you to talk about what uh, is your capacity to see a problem and solve it, to using the sign as your primary tool, right? In. They usually look at your portfolio and see how you handle doing wireframes. That's essential. Actually, before you get a, any any a starting any job interview, you send your portfolio. And in your portfolio, you can show, even if you don't have work experience, maybe you're just you're still going through college or just getting out of, out of college. Mm -hmm. Use all the projects that you have um, that you worked on um, during your college career. Even if you think they're not worth it, they showcase something that you did uh, that was a solution to a problem. So just show that. Show that you're able to analyze the problem and then solve it um, using design. And make sure to put your best foot forward in your portfolio. Then once you get to the interview process, some companies are really fast and some companies is very lengthy. Um, you could interview with three people. Um, before you get the job, you can interview with just one, <laughs> like uh, the startup job that I got I just interview with who who is going to be my my direct uh, manager, right? Mm -hmm. If that is a click as well, like personality wise, it's pretty pretty much certain that's a go. When you're interviewing with three or four people, um, it can vary. Like I was, I, I don't know. Um, I thought the interview went really well, and when I asked for feedback, I interviewed with five people, so I thought the interview was re went wow. really well. And out of those five people, I guess one of them didn't really like me. <laughs> and they didn't make the hire right. I think when you interview with five people, like all of them part of a project and everything, I think you have to like, I mean, I think the majority of them have to like you or have to like what you're presenting or how your work is going to be. Or maybe they just thought that you were really strong in some areas, but you lacked um, maybe visual strength, visual design strength. And in where I'm, where I'm working on right now, which is uh, one of the other things that I love about Saver, you still have the opportunity to have multiple hats. Like if you're passionate about learning to code, they will encourage you to learn how to code and they will try to just help help you grow in your strengths, right, and your interests. And there's other companies. Um, Saver is a big company, but I guess there's other companies like are even bigger, I don't know, Google level or Facebook level, that they're just really specializing what they're looking for out of a designer or it could be a, it's an experienced designer, it could be a visual designer or it could be an experienced uh, interaction designer or a researcher, a user experience researcher. So they're just very focused on making sure that's the right profile. And sometimes what? if you still want to do a lot, you may not always fit the mold, right? Mm -hmm. Cindy, what, what kind of questions did you get? In your interviews, do you remember it all, or is it too um, long ago? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I guess one of the basic question is, what is your design process? Um, okay. That's always basic. How do you approach a problem? Like, I started by doing research, and then I do 
uh, iterations, and then I come up with a solution, right, for example. Then a couple of other things they ask you about your projects, you know, they, since I go into your portfolio, you, you go explain why did you make some design decisions in certain areas, right? Um, why did you decide that this would be, you know, best as a mobile? Or, and why did you decide to come up with that interaction? And, um, let's see what else. Um, I guess overall, those are the two main questions that I remember. Um, what interested you as well? You know, how, why did you decide to continue this career? Like, I remember an interview I did for another company. I, I was living in Silicon Valley before, and I did this interview for a Silicon Valley company. And they just asked me about why did I want to work there? <laughs> you know, why did you want to come and work at this company? <laughs> and sometimes, even though that sounds easy, it always like, oh, how do you answer that? You know, <laughs> what if you're interviewing for for LinkedIn or something, mm -hmm. you would say, because you guys are awesome. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not always the professional answer, but, you know, think about if the, I think that one of the things that I knew that I really wanted to work for Saver was when I started researching the company, also be prepared about the company that you're going to interview with. Even if you are at the best designer, if you don't know nothing about the company culture, it's really going to be really hard for you to, to get in because they're going to ask you, why do you think you'll be a good fit in that company. Yeah, culture so, makes a huge difference. Yeah, maybe you're already familiar with some of the designers working there. You've seen their give conferences or, or they teach somewhere and you know, that's why you wanna work there because you wanna learn from those people and collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's very, a pers very personal question but it's usually a question in, in all interview processes. Oh yeah, I agree. And my last question is, do you have any advice for career changers who are trying to get into UX? Um, I would say, I think that be very conscious about when you're trying to make a career change or when you want to try to get into UX um, to make sure that this is something that you really want to do for a living because you may think that um, it's just, you know, fun and entertaining but there's actually a lot of work that goes into the research part of it and understanding the problem and making sure you're coming up with with creative solutions that are also um, usable. Uh, sometimes people think it's, well, when I try to explain it to my parents, it's like, oh, so you just do the pretty buttons that go here and there, <laughs> right? And it's not always about doing just the pretty buttons. It's, it's actually it's always about making sure that those are the functionalities that will make your product um, innovative and clean and functional. So, great. That, that yeah, that's, all. that's really good advice. Because <laughs> I, sometimes I do start thinking more about the interface than the, the research. But it's it sounds like a healthy mix of both. Yeah, I think you have to have both. I mean, you cannot do one without the other. And you can always iterate your design and improve it and make it better. But you always have to know why is that you're making those decisions. I mean, honestly, if I just were to say, or oh, that, you know, button looks really good in the middle, maybe they'll believe me because I have experience. But if I have data that sustains that when you have a contrast, a screen that contrasts with your button and in the center, it's, it's, a, it calls, it's a call for action. And that call for action, it's the, the most important thing in your screen. It's, it's sustained, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just because I think it looks better there. <laughs> it's, it's always a balance of, of functionality and aesthetics. Well, it was great having you on here. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for um, allowing me the time to chat with you and, you know, sharing my, I guess, my short experience, but it's, you know, good for me to put it out there. <laughs> it's my career is growing. It's that I'll, I think, I'll get I there. Think you have plenty of experience, Cindy. <laughs> it's been... uh, well, I think that this past four years have just gone by so fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that's all I can say. Like um, before, I had no experience in UX, and four years ago, I didn't even know I wanted to do this. So now that I'm just living this, like living, this is what I want to do. It's just really great. Yeah, it's awesome how sometimes you just fall into what you love to do. It just happens. Yeah, I think that's a, a blessing, so I'm happy for that. And 
Awesome. Thank you for allowing me to share that. Yeah, and are you on Twitter or Facebook or anything? Yes, I am. Um, people can follow me um, uh, at Cinderella, and that's C-I-N-D-Y-L-L-A-A. -L -L -A. I'm also on LinkedIn and um, on Facebook and Instagram. So you're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like I'm everywhere. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to see random pictures of cute cats sometimes and <laughs> the weather. I love to take pictures out of my window. So, cool. but yeah, I do post uh, articles like research articles that I, I think are interesting. You know, in terms of what the industry is doing and where things are going in UX and UX and tech on my Twitter, so you can go through that and maybe find something that you like to read. I don't write them, but I do retweet them. Yeah, you do post really good stuff. Right. <laughs> cool. Well, oh, thanks thank again, you. and uh, have a great night. Thank you, Kristen. You have a good night, too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.